first thing I did was I removed the splash guard from beneath. This is over here. And I also removed just the air intake, that middle section there. It's pretty easy. Just loosen these and then the tug's loose. It gives you a little bit more room to get to the engine core drain plug, which on this motor is located just beneath the exhaust manifold back here. It's a little bit tough to see, but you can see it poking down there at about a 45 degree angle probably beneath the manifold. So what we'll do now, we got our cap off, unplug the overflow cap. Um, we're just gonna, there's a little pickcock down here at the, at the bottom edge. On the radiator, you can see it here. What we're just gonna do is just open that up and drain. You can see the fluid's coming out nicely here into our pan. One thing that's important is I did let the car cool all night. A lot of people say maybe an hour or two is probably the minimum you should do. I just let it cool all night just to be safe. I'd really rather not burn myself. We're gonna wait until this is done and I'll also show you how to drain the, uh, the heater core. Let the car cool overnight after driving yesterday to pick up a couple supplies, one of which is the Long Life Toyota Antifreeze. It's probably the one you want to use, but from what I've read, you know, there's a lot of other brands that do just fine. Really, at the end of the day, I'm not sure it's going to make that much difference. So we've been draining here, I want to say about 10 minutes. This is still going, so I'm going to give it a little more time. Okay, so we're about to drain the heater core. Now this is my solution for this. Uh, the spigot this runs from is gonna be 3 8 inch, so I just bought some stretchy tubing here. Uh, it's a little expensive. I think I paid three something a foot and I got three feet. Um, this is sort of what lack of planning gets you, but you know, still save a lot of money compared to taking it to the shop. So um, this will just fit over the end and we'll snake that down into a pan beneath the car. You know, there's a bolt back here. It's 14 millimeters that we're going to loosen after we attach this and uh, we'll drain the core. All right, I've placed my vinyl tubing on the drain plug from the heater core. You can see it back there where the light is shining. So that tube just descends down under the car. I got a drain pan right here, ready for that fluid. So now what we do is we take an extender back here and we are going to uh, loosen this up and let that fluid go. All right, so after loosening that ball, now we've now got a nice flow from our heater core into our pan here. You can see this is not a small amount of fluid. So this is all stuff that would have been stuck in the engine if we hadn't gone through this extra step. Alright, so with the help of our funnel here, after we're done draining that heater core, I dispose of that fluid in a different bucket. I keep this tube connected just to verify that that is still closed. I tightened it reasonably well, but just double checking here. I went and filled a radiator with distilled water. Got about two thirds of this, which should be right in order to uh, fill everything up. So now what I need to do is put my air intake back in there, get everything connected, 
start up the engine, let her heat up for about 10 minutes at uh, max heat, and we'll come back. All right, so after I was done draining the heater core, you know, I filled with water and noticed that the spring came detached. I looked down and it was actually in the top of the radiator, so I was lucky to be able to fish it out. Um, just keep an eye out for that. These caps get worn out. What I did was I just went and got a replacement one. Tied her up here. Um, so we're all full with the replacement distilled water. Now we're going to go start up the car. Crank the heat. Start up the car and crank the heat. That's fine. Off the AC. Let this run for about 10 minutes. So now our temp's starting to climb a little bit, it looks like. And now we can see our temperature starting to get up towards about midway there, which on a warm day like today, that'd be where it'll sit. Alright, so what I wanted to do now is really just kind of total up what we did during the whole flush <clears throat> procedure today. And up top here, we've got some basic math, just four quarts per one US gallon and then 128 ounces per one US gallon. So um, by virtue of that, we've got, you know, one quart is 32 ounces. Uh, after completing all the steps today, I added one gallon, uh, the entire container of the Toyota Red Long Life, which is 128 ounces. And then I measured this out. It was three containers of 32 ounce, um, 32 ounces of distilled water, and then uh, some change uh, to total up to 246 ounces, which, given the 7.9 quart capacity of the system as described by the uh, owner's manual we got pretty close to making sure that we had um, we had flushed and then uh, replaced basically all the fluid that was in the system and so uh, right now I just want to do a recap basically start to finish I'm also going to put this down beneath the video just to uh, tell people kind of sum up what we did um, first we allowed our vehicle to cool recommend at least one to two hours um, I removed the splash guard and I also removed uh, the part of the air intake that I showed in the video really the reason for that was just so that I would have an easier time getting to the the drain spigot on the engine core uh, after that, just placed a drain pan beneath the radiator, uh, opened the pitcock and allowed all the fluid to drain. I recommend not taking the pitcock entirely out unless you want to have a little bit of a mess on your hands because uh, it does come out pretty fast. Uh, letting it drain slowly should be just fine. It takes a little longer, but um, it, it sort of depends what kind of space you're working in. Uh, at that point, I went and I placed the 3 8 inch uh, tubing on the drain plug of the engine core and with an extender I loosened the 14 millimeter bolt to start the flow. Obviously we had a, a drain pan underneath with the, the tube sneaking down to that. Then after that had completely drained and we had all the fluid out of our system, all the you know, fluid prior to our drainage today. I uh, tighten that bolt back up. So at that point, I filled the radiator in the reservoir up to the full line, which is located on the back of the receptacle on the reservoir um, with distilled water. And then um, I added the uh, portion of the air intake that I removed. I started up the car, uh, cranked the heat up to max, shut off the AC and uh, waited for the temperature gauge to, in my uh, ambient temperature, uh, rise up to about 
the the middle of the uh, of the sensor. So um, that was a it was right about ten minutes, and I kept an eye on the temperature gauge. Everything was looking pretty good. Uh, I allowed the vehicle to cool on this occasion for about ninety minutes, and when I went back out. Uh, it, it was still a little bit warm, but the fluids inside were actually pretty cool. Um, when I, at this point, you just again want to repeat the very first thing that you did, which is draining the radiator by loosening the pitcock. Um, and then once that fluid has drained, uh, we tighten that back up. We go, we replace the 3 8 inch tubing on the drain spigot from the engine core and we drain that by loosening the bolt. After that is completely drained again, we'll go ahead and tighten that bolt. Now, if you're not satisfied that these fluids are as clear as they should be, you can repeat that process again of, um, of continuing to put distilled water into the system and drain it, and then uh, draining the radiator and the engine core as many times as you like it's just a matter of how particular you are about that so once we're happy that we have uh, flushed the system then what we're going to do is you know, we've already tightened up the bolt to the engine core we've already tightened up the pitcock that's at the bottom of the radiator and now what we're gonna do is we add our Toyota long life which is 128 ounces, and then as much uh, distilled water as the system will handle. You know, in my case, I'm, I'm showing you that I added the whole gallon of Toyota Red, which is 128 ounces, and then about 118 ounces of distilled water. I tracked it just to see how close I got to the ideal, which would have been 252 and some change. So we got pretty close. Um, and this really does show that I think the extra step of uh, draining the engine core is, is meaningful in terms of getting uh, really a, a complete flush of the system and, um, and setting yourself up for the best result. So uh, thanks you know, for watching. And you know, I'm, I'm new to this, but uh, you know, we're learning as we go here. So, till next time.